my youth, uh, youthful days at, in the rural areas. Uh, we used to, after immediately after the rains, we would then gather during the night uh, with some light in order to capture the insects which normally come after the rains. And after which the following day, then we will have our delicious meals eating these insects. It was so good. But then that ended when we came to, to, to the urban areas. You find uh, there was not, there's not much of that. Middle after rains, people are in their homes. They don't, the children don't even go out to try to capture those insects. But uh, with this program, what makes me happy is that uh, it's now being brought back right here in the urban areas so that people will benefit and their nutrition will be improved. So it's a good thing which as a municipality we are encouraging and we are supporting to the fullest. You know here the young children they normally are given maize meal porridge and it lacks a lot of nutrients, the yeah. amino acids are very low. Mm -hmm. So now if we try to blend the insect a little bit of the insects and the maize meal and see if the porridge is acceptable for children, it can improve on the nutrition. Mm -hmm. So that's why I bought them. We are going to melt them and make a powder. This is our milk. Um, we've got different uh, indigenous ingredients. Uh, we've got different edible insects as well that are found locally. So we realize that um, a lot of our, our youths, as well as um, all the other people in, in Zimbabwe, are not really consuming all of these foods as much as, as we thought they were, because they, there were so many, you know, like perceptions about these foods being, um, you know, unappealing. Uh, they don't have that color, they don't really taste that nice, all of that. So we decided to be very innovative and uh, add value uh, in terms of uh, the variety that these foods are found in. Now the other issue is, since we are trying to promote their consumption, we have discovered that most of these edible insects are very seasonal, such that uh, they've been processed and dried. Most of them, we use them in dried form so that we can use them when they are out of season, powdered form, crushed form, and so on. And uh, we, we have been so innovative that uh, using even the other local foods which are not edible insects as such, but we can combine and come up with a menu which is very interesting. Okay, we also realized that it's important to cater for all age groups in terms of um, product offerings, because you'd find that most of the uh, younger generations did not find the um, indigenous foods quite appealing. And in the hotel industry, we've got limited starters, which are made from indigenous foods and limited desserts. So we realized that we need to come up with more variety in terms of uh, the starters and um, the desserts. Because yes, we can, anyone can just cook up a, a main meal, but when it comes to other things like snakes and um, mm -hmm. there was little de documentation, so, we decided that it's very important to come up with um, these indigenous recipes. Some of the terms I can get if it's rain season, some of my, my impanus get weight. So it's another problem which I would have on this area. So uh, we did give support in the form of land so that we construct a market for the insect selling so that they, they will have uh, somewhere uh, of quality uh, to, to display the, the insects so that it becomes marketable.
to attract the, 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 the market and the customers. So we said we should put quality shelter for them to, to have such an attractive market. So when we observed the amount of losses that were being made and also the appalling conditions uh, within the open markets, we thought it would be good to create a specialized uh, market that will uh, specifically sell uh, insects as a model in Chinoy uh, so that uh, if uh, the users uh, and consumers uh, see this noble cause, uh, they'll uh, perceive it, internalize it, and uh, even try to emulate it in other uh, cities within Zimbabwe and even beyond. My name is Blessing Mutedzi. I come from Manikaland. Um, we are doing Mopani worm farming down there. I think uh, we are the first in Zimbabwe, if not in Africa, to do Mopani worm farming. So we are sitting on a, a very small area of about six hectares. I'm saying small because I want a bigger area of up to say 20 hectares of Mopani worm woodlot. So we're doing Mopani worm farming. We started in uh, 2014. But up to now, we haven't made any meaningful harvest. We've discovered that uh, Mopani worms are a food source to many uh, creatures. Uh, the birds, the, 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 the major obstacle. Uh, we've got the, the lizards, all the lizards. We are thinking that if we put these trees under uh, uh, nets, we cover them with uh, nets uh, completely so that no insect can enter, even the bats, the bears themselves, even this, the, the lizards, then I think you can overcome uh, this problem. Because Mopani worm surely is a, a profitable business. Once we're done with this, uh, insects in the, in the, the beds.